So if I could tell you how to double or even triple the rate of growth of your business while simultaneously spending more time with your family, would that be something that might interest you? So I, I have exactly 11 minutes to do that. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit uh, about the most underutilized asset in your business, relationship capital. So we're all working extremely hard. We all have supercomputers in our pocket. But this asset that's so powerful is not being maximized. And so that's what I'm going to tell you about. So just to step back a little bit about me, as was mentioned, I'm a YPO Metro member, been a member for 13 years. This is my first y, y, uh, GLC. <laughs> My first GLC, I had been sort of in a leadership track at my chapter, but about seven years ago, I became a full-time single dad of two kids. And so that sort of took me out of my extracurricular activities like uh, YPO. But backing it up a little bit, I'll tell you about my experience. So I started out at Lehman Brothers as a banker, an associate, living the dream, working 120 hours a week. And uh, you know, I took a look at what it was that I was doing. I spent all night, most every night, getting information on my desk, trying to figure out how to pull some numbers out, put in a spreadsheet, and then spend five minutes looking at it to draw an insight. And I said, this doesn't make a lot of sense. What would the system look like to automate this? People thought I was completely insane, bringing some level of automation to the black art of M&A. And uh, nobody would give me any money to do it, so I just decided to start building it. And so I built a company called Capital IQ. Capital IQ, uh, people referred to it as investment banking analyst in a box. Uh, I, eventually, I started out, as I said, nobody would give me money. I networked my way to some Wall Street executives, raised a few million dollars, and then raised about $40 million from banks like JP Morgan, Credit Suisse, Bear Stearns, uh, and others. And um, so while I was at Capital IQ, I built it and then sold it to the Standard & Poor's Division of McGraw-Hill. So, and of course, this was after a tremendous amount of sweat, tears, uh, and I really didn't even understand we had sold it. I sort of had post-traumatic stress disorder. We sold it, but then at the same time, I had mentioned I'd been a sing full-time single dad. So a lot of that came to pass. I'd had this business success, but I was having challenge in another part of my life. And I actually, uh, also at the same time, my son, Alex, who's now six, got diagnosed with some learning differences. And so I really stopped working to sort of figure this out. I had no idea how to keep two organisms alive, let alone get involved in their emotional state, let alone make it awesome for them. And so I figured all of that out. And then I, I had to give up some things that were really important to me. So I really liked extreme sports but you know, I couldn't afford it if I got injured, so I stopped. I thought about my work, and I really couldn't go be an entrepreneur, I felt at the time, because it took a lot of time and energy, and I really wanted to be there for my kids in the morning and the evening. And so I was reflecting upon my experience, and I was thinking, what could I do with my business experience? And so obviously, I had all the typical entrepreneur stuff at Capital IQ, but I thought about how I'd really built this business, 100% a year, year over year, in spite of terrible financial markets in the early 2000s, in spite of competition from facts at Thompson, Reuters, Bloomberg. How did I do it? And it was really through relationship capital, something that had come natural to me, but also something that I had systematically applied my mind to and built my own, kind of my own way that I had done it. And I thought, gee, this would be really something interesting if I could build a product that everyone could do the same thing. And so in that, the idea for maximizing a firm's relationship capital is born. So I wrote this idea down on a piece of paper. It was literally, I don't know, seven, eight slides. And I went out and I showed it to some people who knew something about relationships. And I raised $85 million off a piece of paper. And I talked to people like Henry Kravis and Ken Langone and uh, Ron Burkle and Ron Perlman and Terry Semmel and Larry Summers, all of whom invested. And uh, I was oversubscribed, and I took in $85 million because people who had built their entire careers based on relationships said, that's exactly how I did it. If you can make that, everybody's going to want to use that. And so there in relationship science was born. So first it started out with me thinking, who is it that people like us want to do business with? Who are the people? Companies, private equity funds, investment banks, 
foundations, parts of the government. So we started modeling out this entire universe. Who are these people, everything about them, and in many ways, who is it that they know? So then what we talked about is, okay, people like us, we all have a lot of relationships. I'm sure everybody's got a few thousand people in their contacts, but we don't even know who those people are. People move jobs, people invest in companies, people take on extracurricular activities. We can't keep track of all that. That's something that we do and we can tell you about, about the people you know. So if you can't figure out exactly who you know, think about all the people at your organization that have their own relationships, many-fold. And so how can you even walk down the hall and ask Susie, can you help me with this? Because she doesn't even know who she knows, let alone you knowing who she knows. So what we do is wrap all this together and empower the entire organization to have this information to do what you need to do. But now let's make some cold fusion happen, okay? What we do is we collect information from tens of thousands of sources, cross-collate that, aggregate it, rip it apart, re-aggregate it, and model the three and a half million people that everybody here who's in a B2B business wants to do business with. And then what we do is we mop, map all that together to help you and anyone at your company figure out how do we get to our target, our whatever it is, to get it, whatever it is we need done. So let me just show you a little bit what I'm talking about, okay? So we all are looking at how to triangulate on prospects. And so let's take in this example, Boston Properties, okay? So I would just point out, we have tons of information about who, who they are, who's on the board, who owns the stock of this company, deals they've done, who's selling and buying stock, transactions, who the advisors have been to this company, on and on and on. We've got who are the individuals who have advised this company. We can kind of go through everything about them, suppliers. Now the thing that I'd point out is I had, it, the system understands who I know. So I know about 1,900 people in the system, Carol Einiger being one of them. So it immediately drew out that my best path into Boston Properties was with, through Carol, and she's on the board of the audit committee and on the board of directors, and gee, I might not have known that. That might have taken me a lot of research that I might not have ever done. So that's interesting. But also, let's talk about the people I work with, my colleagues. And so as it turns out, Jeff, Ashley, Jason, people I all work, work with know somebody there. And who is it that they know there? Ivan Seidenberg. And what's Ivan's relationship? So this says average. So he was on the board. It ended 10 years ago, so we've degraded that for time. But hey, he could still have some relationships there that they could help. And so I could call Jeff or Ashley and say, what's your relationship like? Could you introduce us to Ivan? And so let's say I wanted to go learn more about Ivan. So we maintain tremendously detailed information sets on all of these people. Ivan's never given us information. He's never seen this product. We have information about his family, where he went to school, relationships he has, his entire career, boards that he's been on. We track everything that is a possible cohort that indicates people he might know. Government advisory committees he's been on, nonprofits he's been on, and it just keeps going. We even have what makes him tick. Nonprofit donations, political donations, holdings, deals he's worked on, compensation even, <laughs> awards, events, if you really wanted to go stalk someone. So basically, at the, at the core of this is how do I get to that person? Okay, because I'm trying to do some business with a company, a person. And so this screen is really showing me on the left is me, and on the right is Ivan, if Ivan's someone I need to get to. And everyone in the middle are people that I know that Ivan knows. And because we have mapped this universe so densely, mathematically, I can get to anybody. So I'm just gonna show you one of a few things. So Harvey Golub's one of our investors as well. He's the former CEO of American Express. So he's on the board, okay, of a hospital with Ivan. I would take me a lot of research to figure that out if I even could. And then I could just scroll on and on and on, and I could take a look, okay, Bill Caracas. It's a banker I'd worked with at Perella Weinberg. Oh, Ivan's on the advisory board. That would have been tough for me to put together. Bill, could you introduce me to Ivan? I really appreciate that, thank you so much. So we're all also trying to figure out who we should be prospecting. And so let's take this conference for example. I'm here from New York, I'm traveling to Los Angeles, I'm very interested in meeting C-suite type executives, 
we are now making a lot of penetration in advertising in the marketing industry, and so I want to look for that. Okay, push a button, get a big list, and I got 209. That's a big list. But most importantly, okay, across the top, is wow, I knew one of those people. I didn't realize that. My colleagues know one. I should find out who that is and ask if I should call on that person. And I am one degree away from 90 people. So I can look at that, make a few phone calls, send a few emails, and I can get six meetings out of this trip pretty easily. So another thing that for us that we all do is try to stay on top of the people that we know who can be important to our success. What's happening with them? So what we do for our clients is we deliver them news every day on everyone they know. And this is everything from a news story to a stock sale to a donation. And so it gives you an opportunity to reach out and say, hey, I saw this, let's grab lunch. So we work with an array of types of companies. We work with over, in our first year of selling, we've gotten over 350 clients. And that was really through using our product. So we work with corporates who are getting new clients, who are raising money. We work with financial service firms, banks, wealth management, hedge funds, private equity funds, who are raising money, or finding deals, who are selling deals. We work with nonprofits who are raising money, helping maximize their board. And just a few of the many, 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 many companies we work with are here. Real estate firms, Studley, Jones Lang, consulting, Accenture, stock markets, the New York Stock Exchange, schools like Yale, nonprofits like the YMCA and the Smithsonian, investment banks and private equity firms like Cow and Houlihan Loki, General Atlantic. So whatever people's business objective is, our system can help them do it faster, better, more effectively. Whether that's I need to acquire a client, I need to retain a client, I need to raise money, whatever the case may be. So there's always a way. That's our mantra at our company. We are working to help people build productive business relationships. Whatever your challenge or your opportunity is, we help people figure out what the way in is. And so they say that necessity is the mother of invention. In my case, I'll say that necessity is the father of invention. Thank you very much.